Peace, peace. It's your man, Just Real, coming to live once again. This is the making of the white man, part three. Now, I have this up here for a reason. The first books of Adam and Eve. I got books of Adam and Eve. I got this up here for a reason. I'm going to go into it. So, we're going to continue where we left off there. All right? So, we know that black folks are God in flesh. We are the supreme being as a collective whole. Right? Okay? So, we've already seen from the gorilla, we've already seen from the gorilla that Snowflake was made by two black gorillas. Right? Okay? And it says this gorilla has recessive genes. Just like the white man, he has recessive genes. Okay? So let's continue. So we know that Adam and Eve are white folks. To show blood in the face. Ready. Right? These are facts that your ass can't deny. So let's keep on going. So, we left off here. When now it's talking about Adam and Eve are being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And where are they forced to go? Who's kicking them out? Why are they being kicked out? Okay? So let's keep on going. So what says to that? Elijah Muhammad said they end up in the hills and caves of West Asia. Right? And it says here that, uh, let's keep on going. It says here that, uh, let me turn this music down, son, so you can hear this. This is what your camp's supposed to be teaching you. Whoever you following is supposed to be teaching you this shit. And that shit is why I've been teaching it. So it says to that, uh, so arguments and discord broke out between original people before long they were fighting and killing one another. These events, as Muhammad states them, are consistent with the historical evidence presented in chapter 1. As to how all of this led to the driving away of the whites, Muhammad writes, the holy people were unable to understand just why they could not get along in peace with each other until they took the matter to the king. The king told the holy people, the black nation, that the trouble they were having was caused by the white devils. Also, we're going to go into, see, when they call these people white devils, this not racist, this through history. The Egyptians call them white devils. Are we, are we going to go into, I'm going to have to make a park board of this. So it says that the king told the holy people of the black nation that the trouble they were having was caused by white devils in their midst. And that there would be no peace among them until they drove these white-made devils from among them. But before the white man was driven away from the civilization, the king gave instructions, gave instructions to the people. Outlining, outlining the procedures they were to follow. According to Muhammad, the king said, gather every one of the devils up. And strip them of the and strip them of our custom. Put an apron on them to hide their nakedness. You remember the Garden of Eden story? God said, "Who told you it's naked? This is done by sex." It says, "Take all literature from them and take them by the weather desert. Don't allow one of them to turn back. And if they are lucky enough to get across the Arabian desert," Let them go into the hills of West Africa. It says, so the fomenters, so the fomenters of trouble were rounded up, stripped of all clothing, made to wear an apron, driven across the desert, and finally released into the hills of West Africa. To ensure that they would not return, guards were placed along the hills bordering the frontiers of civilization. As Muhammad states, once there, they were roped in to keep them out of paradise. So Europe, so Europe is your rope. They were rope, your rope, Europeans. They were roped in. Your rope. So you got Europe. So you got the word Europe. Now we gotta do some, some grammar school uh work. So you got the word Europe. So they play they do wordplay on your ass. So you got Europe. You know the E is silent, right? We know the E is silent. Take off the E and you. You have rope. You rope. It will rope in. Keep on going. So 
So it goes and say that uh, once there, they were roped in to keep them out of paradise, to make sure the Muslims who live along the borders of East and West Asia were ordered to patrol the border to keep Jacob's devils in West Asia, now called Europe, so that the original nation of black men could live in peace, and that the devils could be alone to themselves to do as they please, as long as, as long as they didn't try to cross, as long as they didn't try crossing the eastern border. It says, uh, thus shut away without proper guidance, and the, and the thing to start a civili civilization of, of their own, the white soon lost the knowledge of civilization and slipped into a condition of life comparable to that of the animals. They remained in a savage state for the next 2,000 years. As Muhammad states, quote, they were punished by being deprived of divine guidance for 2,000 years, which brought them almost into the family of wild beasts, going upon all fours, eating raw and unseasoned, uncooked food, lived in caves and treetops, climbing and jumping from one tree to another. What are the facts in regard? Ancient writings agree with Elijah Muhammad. The presence of the Caucasians in the region of the Near East, the disruption caused by their presence, and the way in which they were rounded up and driven away from the people is reflected in many of the writings of the, of the ancient world. Preserved in the Shanama, chapter 1 introduced a number of traditional accounts of the ancient world. One of those accounts, the Shanama, talked about the birth of an unusual white-skinned child who had been driven away and abandoned in the vicinity of the Caucasus Mountains. We compare that account with the, with the sudden appearance of white-skinned people in the area of the Caucasus, of the Caucasus Range and show, how that and show how that child functioned as a symbolic figure and that the story of his life recounts the earlier history of white people. In light of the teachings of Elijah Muhammad and as the factual little show, this account presents an accurate, an accurate portrayal of the earlier history of the, of the Caucasian race who, due to a calamity, were stripped of their clothing, removed from association with men, and released to live, and released to live naked without shelter in the hills of Asia. Let's keep on going. Uh, the events outlined of the Shanama are also summarizing other sources. Such sources, such such sources, likewise, record a series of events identical to those taught by Elijah Muhammad. One example appears in the writings of Diodorus. Who is Diodorus? Isn't that a white dude? Diodorus. Let's lift this thing up. Diodorus. D O Doris. Seclulus. Is Diodorus Seclulus, right? The white man. Right? Diodorus, he wrote some shit. What did this dude write? What did this dude write? This white man, Diodorus. What did this dude write? Uh, it says, one example appears in writings of Diodorus. Diodorus, the ancient writer, admits to have to having copied his account from even earlier records that have been kept by the ancient Egyptians. Uh, Diodorus says that the following appearance of uh, rutted skinned strangers. Egypt began to suffer from a, from a multitude of trouble and diseases. According to the words of Diodorus, the original people of the land decided that the only way to put an end to their troubles was to round up all the strangers they, that they could find and drive them out across the borders. Concerning what happened, Diodorus writes, quote, when in ancient times a pestilence arose in Egypt, the common people ascribed their trouble, ascribed their trouble to the workings of a divine agency, for indeed with many strangers of all sorts dwelling in their midst. The natives of the land surmised that unless they removed the foreigners, their troubles would never be resolved. At once, at, uh, at once therefore, the aliens were driven from the country. Uh, aren't the words of this ancient account identical to what Elijah Muhammad said happened 6,000 years ago? Following the arrival of the white man among the original people? As to the, as to the identity of those strangers, the adorers 
refers to them in another place as a race of lepers and as people having white marks on their skin. In Book 34, Theodorus wrote, quote, For by way of purging the country of all persons who have white or leprous marks on their bodies, have been assembled and driven across the border as being under a curse. What Theodorus here calls white or leprous marks on their bodies is shown in his other writings, as well as by writings of Benito, the Egyptian priest, to have been in reference to the people having white or pale complexions. Many of the writings of the ancient Egyptians, ancient Hebrews, ancient Greeks, and others refer to white or pale complexion skin as a form of leprosy, a disease characterized by skin ulcers and pigmentary deficient. Look at the goddamn uh, gorilla. What they say this gorilla got? Snowflake. Non-syndromatic. Right? Snowflake had unpigmented skin and hair. You see that? Let's keep on going. So it says that the word pestilence used in the translation of Theodora's early accounts describes the state of affairs brought on by the, pre by the presence of strangers. Okay, so let's drop down here. And it says here that all in all, Theodore's account, written thousands of years ago, presents a series of historical events identical in every other way to those outlined by the teaching of Elijah Muhammad. They speak of the earlier presence of a group of white-skinned strangers in the region of the Near East, the troubles that began following their arrival, and the way in which the white-skinned strangers were rounded up and driven away from the region. How well do, do, the, uh, do the events listen to the accounts of Theodorus and the Shanama compare with the story of Adam and Eve? Now this is what, now this is what I'm about to get good at. Are you all ready? Strap your, strap your damn seatbelt on. Because this is about to get interesting. These are facts for your ass. Facts consistent with the story of Adam and Eve. So you got Genesis 3.24. So he drove man out. What man? The goddamn white man. It says that similar points appear in the Bible story of Adam and Eve. According to the Bible, Adam was driven out of paradise. There's a group of them. They were driven out of paradise, but as to where he sent and how they got there, the Bible is silent. Still, it is relevant. Is it is still it is relevant to ask what happened to Adam and Eve after they left the Garden of Eden? Were they forced to walk across the desert? Were they destined to live out the rest of their lives in the darkness of a cave? If it can be shown that these things are true then wouldn't this be convincing evidence in support of the teaching of Elijah Muhammad? Now, we got the, now remember I said, we got the books, the lost books of Adam and Eve. Uh, what we at? Uh, let me close out some of these windows. So now we got the lost books of Adam and Eve, right? These books just pop up from out of nowhere. Right? And we just take them as, as face value. You know what I'm saying? And and we just run with it. So now, let's get into it. This is the book that was taken out. Now listen to what these white folks did. Listen to this. The book of Adam and Eve. This is it. The first book of Adam and Eve. Right? In Ethiopia, a group of 19th century explorers uncovered a very ancient document called the book of Adam and Eve. While the exact age of the text remains unknown, many scholars include it as a part of the Lost Books of Eden. Originally written in Arabic, the text had long ago been translated into Ethiopic. The scholars who first studied it were quick to point out that parts of the text appeared in the Holy Quran, the Talmud, and elsewhere, showing, quote, the vital role it has played in the original literature of human wisdom. Of great significance 
is the fact that the book of Adam and Eve picks up where the book of Genesis leaves off. In other words, it traces the lives of Adam and Eve from the day they left Eden. And amazingly, it talks about their being forced to walk across the desert. It also describes them living inside the cave. They have become their home. Are you hearing this? Here's your forgotten books of Adam and Eve. So if you got these camps out here standing that the black men is Adam and Eve, they're lying to you. They're standing, they're standing that if you are claiming to be Adam from the Bible, you claim you are claiming to be the goddamn white man. So you have here well, God, books of Adam and Eve, book one. On the crystal sea, God commands Adam expelled from Eden to dwell in the cave of treasures. Right? So they done got their ass kicked out of out of what's the name? Out of Africa. This is what they're not telling you. Because these niggas want to know goddamn research. So let's keep on going. It says here that. Uh, so now it says that they were kicked out of Africa. These white folks, Adam and Eve. And they were forced, they were forced to walk across the desert. It also describes them living inside the cave that had become their home. It says. As to the fact that the ancient record speaks of Adam and Eve as having been forced to walk across the desert, the text, the text acknowledges, quote, But when our father Adam and Eve went out of the garden, they trod the ground on their feet. And when they had come to the opening of the gate of the garden and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones and covered with stones, covered with stones large and small, and would stand. They feared and trembled. And as much as wide space of earth with stones and sand is by definition a desert, and since to trod the ground with their feet means they had to walk, then the only reasonable explanation that can be given to these words is that when is that when Adam and Eve were driven out from the garden, they were forced to walk across a desert. These facts agree with Elijah Muhammad. But where did Adam's journey across the desert lead him? Lead him. And did he end up in a cave? The book of Adam and Eve states that at the end of his trip across the desert, Adam looked down at the uncommon character of his skin and lamented, or he cried, over the trouble that his mischief had got him into. Got him into. Compared with everyone else, Adam's skin looked pale and different. This is also to the point at which the text first at which the text first mentions his destination, a cave. Here are the facts as they have been preserved. In the book of Adam and Eve, quote, it says, and indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, and he and Eve over what they had done. It's not just Adam and Eve in Paris, it's a group of them. And it says, and as they had come to, and it says, and, and as they had, uh, and as they came to it, Adam wept over himself and said to Eve, quote, look at this cave that is to be our prison in this world and as a place of punishment. You see, I wrote here the white man in caves. It says, so this shows that after they forced out of the Garden of Eden and made to walk across the desert, Adam and Eve had to live in a cave. Let's go. Book up this this is it right here. This is it right here. Okay? This is it. God commanded him to dwell in the cave in a rock, the cave of treasures below the garden. He had be, that was forced to live in the cave. Cave man. This is facts. Let's keep on going. So this shows that after they were forced out of the garden of Eden and made to walk across the desert, okay, according to Elijah Muhammad, the story of Adam and Eve represents the earlier history of the, of the Caucasian race. Could the many similarities which exist between the text of Elijah Muhammad and what was recorded thousands of years ago in the book of Adam and Eve be the result of mere coincidence? Or is it more likely that, that there is more depth to the teaching of Muhammad than some have been willing to admit? Let's keep on going. We ain't done yet. I'm about to make a part four of this shit. 
Other verses show us what it was like on the inside of Adam's cave. So this is coming from, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, 74. Okay, so this is birth, this is the first book of Adam and Eve, the Lost Books, page seven. So it says that Adam raised his eyes and saw the roof and saw the rock and the roof of the cave that covered him overhead, so that he could see neither heaven nor God's creatures. When in it, Adam could not see Eve; he only heard the noise she made. Neither could she see Adam, but but heard the noise he made. Then Adam wept, or he cried, in deep affliction, and smote upon his breast. And he rose and said to Eve, Where art thou, or where are you at? And she said unto him, Lo, I am standing, I am standing in this darkness. So, you have, I'm lying, let's go to the, let's go here, to, uh, uh, let's let's do something real quick. Uh, I don't think I'm lying. You gonna hear from the white man? You can hear him say that, that the Caucasians, so-called Neanderthals, yet Yeti, Bigfoot, they all white people. And they go and they go all that Yeti, Bigfoot shit. All that stuff is in here. It tells you what happened to them. Uh, let's see evolution. See, if you want real, thorough, researchable history done for free of charge, come to my channel. Okay, so let's go here. Video. I'm just going to the video with the white man. I'm sure a lot of you heard this before. Outline of the other of, of, 
It says outlined in the history of the jinn. The history of the jinn is another of the ancient sources that speak of the earlier history of the Caucasian people. The name jinn means hidden, and according to Muslim scholars such as Saeed Ahmad Khan and others, it is a name given to the group given to a group of savage and uncultural people who once lived hidden along the hills of West Asia. According to the oldest accounts, the jinn had been allowed to live in paradise. But then they started trouble and were driven away into the hills and mountains where they were confined to live in the cage for a period of 2,000 years. Concerning the history of the early, concerning the history of, of the jinn, the early history of the jinn, and the events that led to, to their expulsion, the Encyclopedia of Islam tells us, quote, this, this, cord, this uh, discord broke out among them and led to bloodshed. It says, God, the gods then sent a legion of angels amongst the fomenters of trouble who were thrown back into the mountains. The book approaches to, to the history of, of the Quran tells us that the jinn have been have been given dominion and were ordered and were ordered to inhabit and build upon the earth. Quote, however, they became disobedient toward God, the gods. So the gods dispatched against them a military force of angels. Another article in the Encyclopedia of Islam says of them, quote, but they quarreled and finally blood was shed. Allah then sent a troop of, a troop of angels against the brawlers who were driven back into the mountains. Again, the similarities between the history of the jinn and the early history of the Caucasian people, as taught by Elijah Muhammad, are strikingly clear. As Muhammad has said of them, the whites were expelled after they had caused trouble and bloodshed in the Holy Land. They were driven away into the hills. All right, the ancient accounts of the jinn parallel Muhammad's account of the history of the white of white people. Elijah Muhammad's description of the white of the white man being driven away into the worst, poorest parts of our planet is echoed by Stephen H. Lagdon, who uses nearly identical language when discussing the jinn. In this regard, Stephen Lagdon writes, quote, they rebelled against the gods, and angels drove them to the waste place of the earth. Angels are nothing but messengers, men. The ancient sources of the ancient sources all acknowledge that the jinn were driven, were driven away from paradise for causing trouble. More specifically, they had been sent away to live in the hills. What was the name of the area to which the jinn was sent? Sent to the Caucasus Mountains. The name of the area into, the, into which the jinn had been driven can be found in a number of sources. In the book, Eblis in Paradise, George Rowe talked about how Eglis, leader of the jinn, and its jinn followers were driven out of paradise, and how they were made to live isolated in an area covered with hills and mountains. One of the significant features of Rowe's work is that it reveals the name associated with, the, with that mountainous region. Concerning the name of that area, Rowe states, quote, then Eblis, Eblis, and those who were with him fled from the presence of the Lord. But when Eblis sought to re-enter the garden, he could not find the right path. For which, for which every way he turned his steps, the topless walls of Mount Kaf towered above him. So according to George Road, the area is called Mount, Mount Kaf. B. Allen uh, Donaldson, author of The Wild Road, also acknowledges Kaf. To be the name of the mountains into which the jinn were driven. On page 35, Donaldson said to the jinn that they lived isolated behind the mountains of Calf. Where are the mountains of Calf? Calf or Kaf is the ancient name used to identify the Caucasus Mountains. The book 12 Secrets of the Caucasus bears this out. There, Isad Bey, a man who grew up in the Caucasus Mountains, wrote all about the history of that region and said of the Caucasus Mountains, quote, the ancients called these mountains Kaf. So the jinn were driven into the area of the Caucasus Mountains. Again, this is consistent with the teachings of Muhammad. According to the words of Muhammad, the Caucasians were driven 
to the border of West Asia and released near the area of what is today called Turkey. Turkey is that country which lies on the border which lies on the border of the Caucasus Mountains. Likewise, the, Cauc the Caucasus Mountains are the same ones named in the Shanama as being the place where the white skinned child had been sent. The Caucasus Mountains are located to the north of the to the north the northeast in an area called West Asia. We ain't done yet. We are not done yet. We're gonna get into what the, what the uh, uh, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. So the Caucasian people, there is no doubt. So I'm, I'm I'm giving these nothing but references, sites, and sources to, to look up. It says there is no doubt. Give me one second. It says there is no doubt. But that the history of the Jinn is an outline of the early history of the Caucasian race. Their entire description fits the white man perfectly. Now I'm not now this is not me saying this. This is not Elijah Muhammad saying this. This is this white man saying this. The white man is, is he's, he's just confirming what, what Elijah Muhammad is saying, using other sources. So Paul Guthrie wrote this book. Make of the white man. He's a white man. Let's look, let's look this dude up. Paul Lawrence Guthrie. Let's see who this white man is. Paul Lawrence Gunth Guthrie. Let's see who this dude is. We got an image. Let's see who this dude is. Uh, where is he at? I know he got a picture. He's not dead. He's alive. Because uh, West Muhammad had debated this dude. But let's keep on going. So it says, uh, for instance, uh, in the Malawi Shir Ali translation of the Holy Quran, the Jinn are identified as a group of white-skinned people who long ago lived in the hills and caves of Europe. In the glossary section of the English translation of the word under the word Jinn, the definition reads, quote, the inhabitants of the northern hilly tracts of Europe, of white and red color, whom other peoples look upon as being separate as beings separate from other human beings and who live detached from the civilized peoples of Asia, but who were destined to make great material progress in the latter days and to lead a great revolt against religion. Wild and savage peoples who lived in caves and hollows of the earth and were subject to no rules of conduct. This leaves little room for doubt as to the true identity of the jinn. They are the Caucasians. Other sources verify these facts and portray the Jinn as a pale-skinned, blind race of people. Many of the tri many of the white tribes of today still inhabit the area of the Caucasus Mountains, such as the Kurds, are often spoken of as their descendants. In the book *Children of the Jinn*, M. Khan chronicles the history of the Kurdish people and talked about how their history is connected to the history of the Jinn being driven away into the mountains. This is all facts. All this is time back into, go back and watch my videos, show the people the Caucasus Mountains. Uh, Khan, uh, Khan characterizes the history of the Jinn as one which tries to explain how such a fair-skinned, light-haired people came to be living in the mountains that lie astride. The borders separating present-day Iran, Iraq, Turkey, and the USSR. Okay? Uh, the, Ar the Armenians talk about them and things like that. Now, listen to this. Reenactment and the Atonement. In his book, Message to the Black Man, Elijah Muhammad includes the name Azaziel to be one of many used to describe the white race. According to Hebrew to According to Hebrew tradition, Azaziel is one of the is one of the names given to the leaders of the devils. It is the Hebrew name for Iblis, leader of the Jinn. Once a year, on the eve of the Jewish Day of Atonement, a ceremony is, is traditionally performed in which a goat, Azaziel, is tied to a rope and led away 
from the people out into the deserts and abandoned in the place of hills and rocks. The ceremony of the atonement, handed down from generation to generation, is a reenactment of the earlier history of the Caucasian people. As instructions describing the commencement of the ceremony can be found in the 16th chapter in the 16th chapter of Leviticus. So if you're a so-called Hebrew Israelite, you're supposed to be following these, these customs, these rules. If you so-called if you are so-called claiming to be a, 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 a to be a Adam, you are supposed to be living in the caves. Uh, it says, the verses 21-22 states, He shall put both hands on the goat's head and confess over it all the evils, sins, and rebellions of the people of Israel. And so transfer them to the goat's head. Then the goat is to be driven off into the desert by a man appointed to do, to do it. The goat will carry all their sins away with him into some inhabited land. Concerning the history of Zaziel, Encyclopedia Judaica asserts that long ago he and his followers had been driven away into a land which was cut off, an area and cliffs, a place of hard mountains. Uh, when all of the, these facts are brought together, it becomes clear that the history of Azaziel is identical to the history of Iblis and the Jinn. Like Iblis, Azaziel was bound, driven across the desert, and released in a land of rocks, cliffs, hills, and mountains. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Okay. So they so they do this. This is a this is a Jewish custom that they do. Okay? Now, let's go on over here. One second. I'm bringing I'm bringing to you, I'm bringing to you tonight nothing but straight raw facts that cannot be denied. Ask your camps to do this. They can't do it. They they too busy handing out awards. Like Ronald Dawson, Ronald Dawson Jr. This nigga is passing out awards. So it says here that in the case for 2,000 years, a more thorough understanding of the history of Azazio can be examined by the Book of Enoch. For 500 years, the Book of Enoch was accepted as a part of the Bible. It was accepted as such by Jesus, Peter, and Paul, and by all of Jesus' other followers. But later, the church took the book of Enoch out of the Bible. Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. So they took this book out, right? Oh, that's all we know. Oh, they took the book. They put these books out. Where's the where's the uh, the evidence? It says. Uh, but later, the church took the book of Enoch out of the Bible. An article discussing the history of the book of Enoch appeared in the December 7, 1935 edition of the Liberty Magazine, showing how other parts of the Bible had been changed or altogether removed from Scripture by cunning European leaders. The article reads in part, quote, For more than a century, or a hundred years, Scholars and church officials debated as to whether or not certain gospels, epistles, and apocalypses should be included. For instance, it was long debated which to include in the canon, the book of Revelation or the book of Enoch, which had been accepted as scripture by Jesus and Paul and the whole Christian church for several centuries. Revelation finally won out and became the last book of the Bible. The book of Enoch, under a stigma, because being uncanonical, gradually dropped out of use and finally disappeared. Fortunately, additional copies of the book of Enoch were safeguarded by the European by the Ethiopians until 772, when they were rediscovered. One of the significant things that a study of the book of Enoch does is it confirms that after Azazio. And his, followers were, and his followers were driven away across the desert. They were made to live in caves for 2,000 years. According to the ancient text, a group of, a group of angels, men and women, were, tied, were instructed to tie Azazio and to propel him and his followers out into the desert. These are white folks. Then, the book says, they were taken up into the hills 
where they were confined to live in the caves beneath rough and jagged, hit and jagged rocks for a period of 2,000 years. The book of Enoch narrates the event this way. Quote, bind Azaziel by his hands and feet and throw him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert which is in Dudel and cast him therein and place upon him rough and jagged rocks and cover him with darkness and let him stay there. Bind them for 70 generations in the hills of the earth. As the American College Dictionary points out, a generation is a period of time equal to 30 years. 70 generations equal just over 2,000 years. Thus, the book of Enoch, the same one that Jesus accepted as part of the Bible, verifies the, the precise amount of time that Azaziel and his followers, white people, were forced to live in the caves. The period of time stated in the book of Enoch matches up perfectly with what has been stated by, the, by Elijah Muhammad. Is this just another coincidence? So what, what is Dudael? Dudael, that's in the desert. Right? Let's see. It says, by, it says, uh, make an opening in the desert. Which is, which is in Dudael. Uh, let's see what this is. I read this book about six, seven times. Dudael. Let's see. Dudael. Uh, let's, see. let's see what this is. Let's see. Uh, Okay, let's keep on going. I'm out of time. All right, so it says the Tibetan monks, they, they acknowledge it. They acknowledge it. They acknowledge it. At the beginning of each new year, the, the, uh, the, the Buddhists of Tibetan perform a, a, uh, an identical ceremony in which these same events are reenacted. However, the Buddhists do not use a goat or any other animal as a substitute. They use real people. The ancient Tibetan ceremony is rich in symbolism. It retains the use of an apron or a coat of skin. It employs the use of two colors, black and white. It utilizes the symbolism of the number six. They say that Adam was made on the sixth day. Six thousand, year six thousand. What do you think this movie's about? Um, uh, what do you think this movie's about? The sixth day. What do you think this movie is about? The sixth day. Right? Anna Schwarzenegger, right? And what is Anna Schwarzenegger's name in here? His name is Adam. He's a pilot. His name is Adam Gibson. Adam. He's representing the white race. The white man. So the so, so Tibetan monks, they, they do this this uh this ritual. This is, this is the ritual, this is a reenactment, and they use real people. Okay? Now This is part three. I'm about to make a part four. If I don't make it tonight, I would definitely be making it tomorrow. And I think this is enough right now to get you, you know what I'm saying, up to speed. 
And then part four will be the continuation. Now I done read this damn book for, for free. For free. Make another white man. And this book is only 93 pages. And it's packed with tons of information and sources and references. So if we go back here to the to, to black fruit science, it's telling who these who the gods are. In your Bible it says God, the gods created the heavens and earth. Who is that? Your, your ancestors. Where do you come from? Where, where do you come from? You don't come from here. It's already been, it's already been established that the black folks' DNA is not of this earth. So if we don't come from here, where the hell do we come from? We come from the star system of Cyrus. They pronounce this Cyrus, but it's Cyrus. That was worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. Our earth and our solar system were created 78 trillion years ago. 78 trillion years ago. Our ancestors don't talk about no goddamn Big Bang. That's bullshit. We own to you, Mr. White Man. We know where you come from. You come from us. We're your mothers and fathers. This is facts. They cannot be denied. Straight facts. Now, let's read this real quick. So it says, Yaakov, Yahweh took 59,999 volunteers to a, to a secluded area, to a secluded island, and proceeded to make the to make the four light-skinned races whose descendants are all non-blacks on earth today. This happened 6,000 years ago. The races were made in stages. The first stage took seven generations, 200 years, of deliberate breeding. It involved with black people and getting dark brown children from them. The dark brown children were then encouraged to marry one another, and they produced lighter brown children. The people continued this getting lighter and lighter children until after seven generations the black germ was completely removed. At that point, the first light-skinned race was born. This new race was bred from another seven generations, or 200 years later, until the second light race emerged from them. Then, after another 200 years, the third race, the yellow race, came out of the second race. Okay, I talked about this before. So it says, during the breeding of the first race from black people, many black children were, were born along with them to the same families. In other words, many families that gave birth to dark brown children also gave birth to ordinary black children as their siblings. Many of these black children were murdered on that island. They were killed in order to instill a light-skinned supremacy complex among the people of the island. Such a complex was absolutely was absolutely essential for those people to succeed with their project. However, uh, the instilling of, of the complex, though necessary for the, for the success of the project, did not have to be achieved through murder, but that is how they, but that's, that is how they did it. There are legends and ancient texts describing the history of this violent time. One such legend is reported in the Old Testament when Pharaoh apparently orders all the firstborn sons of Israel to be killed. This is a garbled, this is a garbled, legendary, this, uh, this is a garbled legend distorted by Jewish transcribers of the ancient scripts. So this, so this Pharaoh ordered all the firstborn sons to be killed? Bullshit. It says these Jewish people, we, uh, alter the documents. I'm paraphrasing. They alter, it, it alter the documents who replaced the leaders of the island nation with the Egyptian pharaoh. But the original legend describes much more ancient events set in the island called Pilan, and not in Egypt, and it relates to the killing of black children. Even though many black infants perished on that island, not all were killed. Many parents succeeded in hiding their children and eventually taking them off the island. There are also legends describing how some of the children were removed. A popular legend is the story how Moses was uh, spirited away behind the reeds of a river hidden, hidden in a woven basket. However, Moses was not involved in this uh, desperate adventure because he was a legendary figure. 
That says because he was a legendary figure by the time the Old Testament was transcribed, the transcribers used his name to lend emphasis to the story, which actually happened some thousands of years before Moses was born. Many children and their parents and guardians were, who managed to escape ended up in Northeast Africa and the Middle East. They immigrated mostly to the country called Israel and Palestine and, and other nearby locations joined to Africa by the natural land bridge. Okay? Um, it says all the people escaping from the island were the adherents of Yahweh's religion which he had established for them and their descendants before he died. Now, these are straight facts. Why aren't your camps teaching this stuff? None of them. None of them is, is saying this stuff. N not nobody I've heard of. But like I said, hey, you want to keep on following out those camps? Go ahead. That's on you. Just proven. So if white, if white people have only been for 6,000 years, who was in Atlantis? The Atlanteans. Who was that? The lost city of, the lost city of Atlantis. Who, who was that? One white folks. The black folks. Niggas. So, we know here, now we know where we come from, how long we've been here, who made us, who, who we truly are. Okay. Our ancestors made all this shit. The people who came before us made all this stuff. And these white people know it. And their God who did all this shit is Yahweh. A black God. That's facts. So it says here, listen to this. Not only are the atoms of our earth identical to the star systems, but they actually but but they were actually the star systems of that universe of our ancestors. Where they come from? The star the star Osiris. Osiris. Our electrons were their planets on which they live. When the purpose of that universe was completed, the minds of our ancestors expanded to an unimaginable extent, such that they could see the entire universe as a single spirit the size of our earth. That spirit became our earth, and our ancestors made themselves new bodies from its substance. They became its first inhabitants. They are the original people called the first gods. Let's go back here to the goddamn second end word. What you niggas not getting? What do you niggas not get it? Niggas. These are niggas. N from or belonging. G equals first or beginning. Ra. Or God is the source. So NGR means from or belonging to the source. The original first people. Who are the original first people? Niggas. Niggas. This is ancient. This is ancient. What's ancient? Shit, we going back goddamn 78 trillion years ago. 78 trillion years? That's how that's how long niggas have been in existence. So far they have dated niggas to, to 78 trillion years. And the white man and the white man is only is only uh six thousand years? That ain't shit. So, it says here that uh, we as black people are their descendants. Our lineage stretches all the way back to them. That is the story of how they created our universe. So, we come from the original first people. So, we come from these niggas. These niggas who are the first Original people. I'm bringing straight sources and facts. 
you all just using you you all you niggas who are just using one goddamn book. N equals from or belonging. G equals first or or beginning. R equals Ra or the source, God. So the meaning of the word nigger is from or belonging to the source, the original first people. Where did where did the original first people come from? The Dogon people said they people came from, from the star system of Sirius, Osiris. This dude who wrote this book, he said that his ancestors came from, from they, they come from here. This dude is from the tribe. They asked him these questions. He said, man, where you got all this knowledge from? Where, where you learn all this stuff from, man? This dude said they were taught, they were taught by their own elders. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let me see. They're asking him, where is he getting all this knowledge from? Right here, he says, it's very interesting. Where did you get all this information from? Who told you about it? He said, I was taught the ancient history of our people by the elders of my tribe. They have kept it in safe custody for many thousands of years and passed it on from generation to generation. So he's asking, he said, where are you, where are you from, man? He says, I am from the tribe called Botswana. My people live in different regions in, so in southern Africa. In the countries of Malawi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Angola, and Nam Nam uh, Nambia. Now remember Nambia, I did a video on this book right this uh I did a video on right here. I did a video on uh um uh, if you if you look up the book called Germany's Black Holocaust, Germany's Black Black Holocaust. I'm trying to get you niggas to think. All this shit is tying in together. This book right here, Germany's Black Holocaust, right? These white folks are doing experiments on these black on these black niggas, on these niggas, right? Way before Hitler came on the scene, and look what this, look what look what name pop up. In the early nineteen in the early eighteen nineties, blacks were tortured in Germany concentration camps in Southwest Africa, now called Nambia. What this dude just say? I'm from the tribe called Botswana. My people live in different regions in Southern Africa, in the countries of uh, Malawi, Zambia, Z Zimbabwe, Angola, and Nambia, but mostly in South Africa and Botswana. Our language is called Setswana. Nambia. Black folks. We come from here. The star system Sirius, Osiris. They worship that system, that, that star. That's where they came from. So when we die, we going back to where we come from. I hope this video has been a uh, has given you more encouragement to, to to find out and search who you are. You're more than just some goddamn Hebrew Israelites. You descend from the source of creation. The source of creation happened to be from black folks, niggas. With that being said, I say peace. Click subscribe to my videos. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you very much.